بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف دا لیکچر سیریز آن انٹر نیٹ ورکنگ وتھ لینکس ان دا پریویس سیشن وی ہیو بلڈ آر لیب انوائرمنٹ وتھ تھری مشینز رننگ یوبن ٹو سرور کالی لینکس اینڈ مائکروسافٹ ونڈوز We have learned to assign static IP addresses to those machines and today we are going to use DHCP server for the task. Dear students, in case if you have a very large network having hundreds of devices, the task of manually assigning IP addresses become tedious and error prone. So a DHCP server help us automate this task. A dynamic host configuration protocol is a service that if running on one of the machines in your local area network will automatically assign different TCP IP configuration parameters to the devices on boot. These parameters can include IP addresses, subnet mask, default gateway, name server addresses and maybe the time server and print server address as well. Right now all the machines are up and running. So right now I am on the Ubuntu server machine and it is having the address 192.168.1.100. This is the Kali Linux and the IP address is 192.168.1.101 and let me run the window XP machine as well okay by the time the windows XP machine comes up let us repeat what we have done before on the Kali machine if I do at C network interfaces you can see in this file for the ETH 0 interface we have set the configuration to DHCP. We have done the same thing on, on the Ubuntu server as well. Cat at C network interfaces. You can see DHCP over here. And if I go on to my Linux machine, IP config you can see 192.168.1.102 over here and in case if I just see that whether the DHCP server option is selected over here or not I go to local area connection see the properties of TCP IP and I see the option obtain an IP address automatically is selected over here. Last time we have done it statically. Okay. Okay, dear students, by writing this line over here in this file on our Kali machine, how does it know as to whom it should request for all the required TCP IP configuration parameter? To understand this, we need to see behind the curtain. Let me let me bring the ETH zero interface down for our Kali machine. If down ETH zero, and let me bring it up. If up ETH zero, you can observe over here that there is a DHCP client which is requesting uh, an IP address. The first is the discover message. And the discover message is broadcasted on all machines on the local area network at port 67. If a DHCP service is running on any of the machine in our local area network, and in our case our PTCL broadband router, it will send a DHCP offer message, which is sent directly to the client using its MAC address. 
DHCP offer is sent from my broadband router 192.168.1.1. After receiving the DHCP offer, the client that is this Kali machine then sends a DHCP request message to the DHCP server. And finally, the DHCP server sends a DHCP acknowledgement message. You can see it over here, the DHCP acknowledgement message, which says that you can use now this address. And you can see this has been sent by the, by the router. Before moving ahead, let me, let me, let me see if I can access my browser over here. Uh, open Safari or any other browser, 192.168.1.1. Write down the IP address of your PTCL broadband router. Give the username and the password. It will open up the admin panel of your router. Okay. First of all, remember gentlemen, as far as the users are concerned, by default there exist three users on the PTCL broadband router, with the names of admin1, support1 and user1, having the same passwords as their names. If you want to create new user or change the password or name of existing user, you can click management and then you can go to access control. Over here you, 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 you can do away with the users. Right students, every wireless router at your home or access point in the university has a name that by default appears to the nearby devices. In case of a PTCL broadband router, the default is PTCL BB. If you want to change it, you can go to wireless then basic and over here you can see you can change this address. Similarly, when a device tries to connect to the broadband router, it may or may not be required to provide a passphrase. If you want, you can go to wireless security. You can see here is the SSID RF131 of my home router and over here you can give the passphrase. Okay, uh, let's move on to the let's move on to the advanced setup because I want to see the from there. I, let me go to LAN and IPv4 routing. Here you can see uh, the list of the MAC addresses and the IP addresses. Uh, let me first show you uh, the addresses that are there in, uh, in DHCP. Where is DHCP? Let me find out DHCP over here. Under device info over here. Here is the DHCP. This is the uh, DHCP uh, table. These are the leases of the host name, MAC address, and IP addresses which have been given. Over here, you can see 192.168.1.100 has been given to this MAC address, which is a Ubuntu server. 192.168.1.101 has been given to this MAC address, which is Kali, and 102 is given to this MAC address, which is Windows XP. So this, this shows that if a machine joins the network after some time, a request for an IP address and request for an IP address, it may be it may be assigned a different IP because you can see over here these leases expires after this much amount of time. Right. If you want that your machines or devices should be given a fixed IP always whenever they join the network, you can you can go to the advanced setup LAN and IPv4 auto config. Over here you can add the entries by clicking this button and write down the MAC addresses of the machines and their 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 
IP addresses which you do not want to change. Over here you can see I have associated the MAC address of my Ubuntu server. This is the MAC address of my Ubuntu server with 192.168.1.100. So, whenever my Ubuntu server machine will request for an IP address from the PTCL broadband router, it will get the same fixed address. So, now, uh, well, we know that PTCL broadband router is running the DHP service over here. What I want is, I want to run this service on my Ubuntu server and let my my Kali machine get the IP address from the DHCP server. For that, the first step is to install the DHCP server. Let me install it by apt-get install Since I have already installed this, so it is saying that it is already the latest version. So, uh, the second step is to configure for every server. You just need to edit two files and write the required configuration in them for the DHCP server. The first file is at C default ISC DHCP server. Over here, you just have to enable one line that is this interfaces line and write down space separated list of all the interfaces which you want this server to, to, to fulfill. I have written ETH0 and ENP0S3 which is the name of the interface of my Ubuntu server. Let me save and quit. The other file is at C DHCP DHCP d.conf dhcpd.conf well this is the main configuration file it contains a lot of information uh, for example the default lease time which is 600 seconds maximum lease time which is 7200 seconds and this is authoritative you can read the comments and this is one important thing well, over here I am giving uh, uh, the subnet address that is 192.168.1.0 and the net mask it is 255.255.255.0 and then I am giving the address range from within which this DHCP server should assign addresses to the requesting clients and the address range from 192.168.1.125 to 1 .4, uh, 145, 1.25 to 1.45 and uh, optionally you can give the address of the domain name server the router and the broadcast address as well so after writing these uh, configuration you can save and exit and the third step after installing and configuring a uh, server the third step is to start the service let us first check out whether the dhcp service is running or not system controls status isc dhcp hyphen server and it says the service is loaded but it is disabled and it is inactive and dead since this is the first time we are starting uh, or managing a service so let me briefly tell you what do we mean by a service in linux and what this system control command do Right, dear students, a service normally called a daemon in Linux is a long-lived process that is often created at system startup and runs until a system is shut down. It runs in the background and has no controlling terminal. Since in this series of lectures, we are going to use various networking services, so we need a service manager. Yes, we need a service manager to start, to stop, to enable, to disable and to check the status of these services. Well on uh, Linux machines, the old service manager was sysv init, but today most Unix flavors and almost all the Linux distributions like Ubuntu 15.04 onward, Debian 7 and 8, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and CentOS 7. They all use 
what we call system D. System D. Let me do which system D. You can see that it is there in pin system D. So, system D has replaced the old traditional sys V in a daemon as well as a short lived upstart daemon. The system D, let me do ls hyphen l to this. forward slash pin forward slash system D. You can see forward slash pin system D is a soft link to forward slash lib forward slash system D system D. Well, this is the daemon which is used which normally is used to manage the, all the all the services on your machine. There is a command that is system CTL man system CTL. This is used to control the system D and uh, system and service manager. Control system D system and service manager. Let me let me use this command now. System CTL. Let me run it and pipe it to less. Well, this tells us about the status of various services running on this machine right now. You can see networking.service, SSH.service and so on. Let me quit and clear the screen and let me check the status of DHCP server again. So, it is down. Let me start it. System CTL start ISC DHCP server and let me check the status again. You can see it is up and running over here. And let me check netstat hyphen ANU. You can see a lot of services which are running on different ports. And uh, let me let me grab port number 67. You can see the service is running on port number 67. Well, dear students, if uh, you want to dig out details about the system daemon and the system control command, you can uh, uh, have a view of my lecture 28, managing services using system D, which is part of the OS with Linux course, on my YouTube channel, or on my website rfpart.me. Now the service is running on the server. Let me come on Kali and check the address. And the address is 101. And it is not changing from 125 to onward which I have mentioned in, in the Ubuntu server machine. So let me down ETH0. Let me bring it up and let me do if config same address. Let me do it again. See, address is changed. On the Windows machine, you just need to restart and check the address. Well, gentlemen, uh, a word of caution. You can see the new address over here, but remember, right now there are two DHCP services running in a local area network. One is on the Ubuntu server and the other is of course the DHCP router at 192.168.1.1. So when this Kali machine or any client on this network broadcast a request regarding an IP address to a DHCP server at port 67. Both these may send a response to this Ubuntu server as well as PTCL broadband router. In this case, the client may select the first DHCP offer message. So, I will strongly recommend that you should not run 
two DHCP services in a local area network. Okay, students. We are done with our third session for the subject of internetworking with Linux. In this session, we have learned what is DHCP service and have learned how to configure this service on a PTCL broadband router as well as on our Ubuntu server machine. I hope it was informative for you all. If you have liked it, please subscribe my YouTube channel and share it with your friends. Happy learning and Allah Hafiz. Thank you.